everybody, it's Zach again, NinjaTour.com. Coming in and making a video for you today. Uh, just thought I'd, I did the, that video the other day. I posted it up the other day on the whole uh, uh, Easter Sunday, Resurrection Sunday. And now I'm doing another video. It's the same day for me, but different day for you because I'm going to post this video on a different day. So I don't think I'm wearing the same clothes over and over again. Anyway, uh, <laughs> I thought I'd do a video on my Easter uh, fraud chart. I have not done this before. It's, it hasn't been on the website in a long time. I'm going to put it back on the website. In fact, it's on the website right now. Uh, you can go over to uh, newtutora.com and download this chart. It's called the Great Easter Fraud Chart. I made this, my goodness, like 11 years ago now. I made this 11 years ago, and um, it just talks about the, the fallacy of what we think are three days and three nights and what we've been taught in the Christian church. And this is one of the things that a lot of people first start scratching their heads about. You know, when we discover Torah and we discover that what they're teaching us at that pulpit is way different than what they're teaching us at that Bible, inside that Bible. And that's the whole three days and three nights. And the verse goes, uh, Matthew 12, uh, verse 40, uh, chapter 12, verse 40, For as Jonah was three days and three nights in the belly of a huge fish, so the Son of Man will be three days and three nights in the heart of the earth. And so people start scratching their heads. But well, if he died on Friday night or Friday evening before sundown, and he was raised on Sunday morning, that's like a day and a half. You know, where's, where is this? Where is this three days and three nights? Because a day and a half ain't like three days and three nights. I don't know how you're counting. Uh, and so we begin to look closer at this thing and we look at it and we were like, you know what? Based on all the verses that you can read in the New Testament, when you compare them all, it's very clear. He died Wednesday night, Wednesday evening, buried before sundown in the ground, Thursday night, because remember, the Hebrew day starts in evening. The evening and the morning were the first day. The evening and the morning were the second day, right? So you have the day beginning at sundown. So you have Thursday, Friday, Saturday, and then resurrected Saturday night, probably, you know, at twilight. And then the tomb was discovered Sunday morning. The tomb was discovered Sunday morning. So they go to the tomb, and, and we have that verse where spices were purchased and prepared on Friday. Well, that's the only way you can do that. You can't purchase in between the time that he's died and between Saturday Shabbat. You can't buy and sell on Saturday. Everything was closed. So when did they buy those? Well, that puts a day in between, so that's definitely Friday you're putting in there. And then you have the Thursday, the high day, which uh, it's, it's referred to in Scripture John chapter 19, verse 31, it's very clear that that was a high day. This is a high day. Well, people in the Baptist church, Christian churches, don't know what a high day is because we've never studied Torah. The high day is the day after Passover, the first day of unleavened bread. It's considered a high day. It's also considered a Sabbath uh, traditionally amongst um, uh, Jews today. And so you have basically a, a Passover and then a Sabbath, a high day. And then, which is not really a Sabbath, it's a little different. So it's like a mikra instead of a, I believe it's called a mikra. Anyway, it's not, it's not a moed. So you have the Sabbath, it's different. And then you have Friday where the spices were purchased in scripture very clearly. And then you have the regular Sabbath. And then Sunday. That makes it very clear that there's 72 hours, three full days in between the time that he has died and then resurrected. So I've put this chart out. It's helped a lot of people. It got, there's a lot of copies going out. People have, over the years, um, taken my chart and make it, made their own. Um, but uh, this was made back in 2011. I guarantee you this was the first one that came out. Um, and so I've made this, and a lot of people have copied it since. So if you're interested in the chart, it is Easter. You can read this. Look at all the verses. I include lots of verses in here to look up for yourself. 1 Corinthians 15, uh, 21 through 23, Luke 24, verse 1, uh, John uh, chapter 19, verse 31, Leviticus 23, 5 and 8, and then um, uh, some other ones too, obviously the Matthew 12, 41, and some others. So anyway, there's a lot of verses you can go through and read about and why I've come to this conclusion and why I believe it's correct. Um, anyone who says different, you know, they're just holding tra tradition because, you know, tradition, right? So there you go. So the chart is for download on my website, newtutor.com. You can go there right now and find it. You search for, you can use a search option there and search for Easter chart or fraud chart. It'll be on there and you can download it and share it on social media as you want. All right, guys, go home, read your Bible. Thanks.